INEX security and politicians sign agreement for Zamfara State peaceful by election conduct. Also divided over federal government offer to end strike. Professor Mahmoud Yakub asks NAS to pass amended electoral act before 2021 first quarter ends on business. Nigeria seeks better deal on OPEC quota on sports. Olise recalls USA's 94 encounter with Maradona and on the international scene, President Buhari assures deepening economic cooperation with Algeria. Welcome to SVTV News. I am Osajoy Unioza. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the security agencies, 14 political parties in Zamfara State, have signed agreement to ensure peaceful conduct of the forthcoming by election slated to hold on the 5th of December. The agreement was signed in a town hall meeting organized by the security agencies under the leadership of the Zamfara State Commissioner of Police, CP Usman Nagugu, held at Bakura Luku Government Area on Thursday. For more on the story, over now to our correspondent Samira Ibrahim. The Commissioner of Police, CP Usman Nagugu, while appealing to representatives of the 14 political parties to participate in the by-election on the need to control their party supporters before, during and after an election, express satisfaction with the way and manner campaign rallies were so far conducted. The commissioner added that the command has not recorded any incident that will have compelled it to align to war mode position and still appealing to all politicians to continue as it has started. Also speaking, the state resident electoral commissioner Haji Amina Moikuti urged all participating political parties to respect COVID-19 protocol while on the queues for voting across all polling units in the 104 wards of Bokuro local government area. All voters on the queue are expected to wear face masks while social distancing should be observed and ensure adequate use of hand sanitizer as well that will help to protect ourselves from contacting and spreading the dreaded COVID-19 virus. Respondents separately, the representatives of the political parties have called on the INEC and security agencies to be just and fair in playing their constitutional rules while managing the election, assuring that all supporters of the political parties will conduct themselves peacefully. Samira Ibrahim, reporting for SVTV News. The Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Sa'ad Abu Bakar III, has expressed sadness over the level of insecurity in the country, especially the north. Sultan Abu Bakr, who is also the President General of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, said he was worried that bandits were fast overrunning the north with AK-47 rifles openly and unchecked. The Sultan spoke on Thursday at the fourth quarterly meeting of the Nigeria Interreligious Council. For more on the story, Fatima Ibrahim report. Also on Thursday, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, reiterated that community policing would go a long way in curbing crimes in the country. The Sultan lamented at the NIREC meeting with the team, questioning for peace in the challenges of insecurity and COVID-19, that the North had become the worst place to live in Nigeria because of completely collapsed security system. He said, bandits now move from house to house, village to village, and market to market with AK-47 rifles openly, purchasing foodstuffs and other items unchallenged. He lamented that security situations in northern Nigeria has assumed a worrisome situation, pointing out that no strong media platform could report the story to the world. The Sultan noted with concern that a few weeks ago, over 76 persons were killed in a community in Sokoto State in AD. Fatima Ibrahim, reporting for SVTV News. The Kaduna State Commissioner of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arwan, said that Army and Air Force troops have reportedly launched an onslaught against bandits who have been terrorizing Kaduna State along its border with Niger State. The military offensive was in response to bandit attack on Kugosi and Kajari villages in Chinkuluku government area of Kaduna State on Wednesday. The commissioner said military authorities have notified the Cardinal State government that troops have attacked other groups 
of bandit in Chinkuluku government area close to the boundaries with Niger State. According to the operational feedback, ground and air components of the military subsequently engaged the bandit. The Cardinal State government is grateful to the military for successful outing and breakthrough. The Inspector General of Police, IGP Mohamed Adamu, has urged officers and men of the force to use their firearms in self-defense and not to kill innocent citizens. Mr. Adamu spoke in Abeokuta, the Ogun State capital, during his official visit to the police command on the heels of the NSAS protests in October. The police chief advises men to be professional at all times while performing their duties. For more on the story of an outer correspondent, Sumaya Ibrahim. The IGP was received by the Assistant Inspector General of Police, AIG, Zone 2, Ahmed Iliasu. Deputy Inspector General DIG Southwest Lee Oyebaide and Police Commissioner Edward Awolo Ajugun. The IGP said series of intimidations can prevent them from doing their job. In defense of yourself and when you have no other means to escape from any attack, you are allowed to use your fire aim but not allowed to kill. As police officers, you are not allowed to kill. When you use your fire aim, you are supposed to maim. Also, in Ondo State, AGP Amadu assured the policemen of adequate protection if they follow the right procedure in enforcing law and order. The IGP urged the policemen not to be demoralized nor afraid to carry out their duties. My is reporting for SBTV News. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, Branches are divided over whether to accept the federal government offer and call off their eight-month-old strike. The union will harmonize the positions of zones and branches at a meeting in Abuja on Friday, with some branches insisting that the government must meet all the demands before the strike is called off. The union may put the decision to a vote. The Amadubelo University branch agree with the government on the 40 billion era and academic allowance. The branch, however, called for payment of the allowance before the strike could be called off. Lecturers at the Federal University of Petroleum Resources, Delta State, said negotiations with the federal government must be concluded before the strike is called off. Some parents and school owners have complained that the National Examination Council, NACO, has yet to reschedule the missed subject even as the exam ends on Saturday. Reports tell that students in some schools couldn't sit for some subject due to the NSAS protest. Subjects such as economics, commerce, technical drawing and chemistry practical were not taken in some state including Lagos, Bayosa, Edo and River State. A parent who resided in Mushi on Thursday said her daughter missed some three subjects adding that she had yet to be told the new date for the exams. Neko had said nobody immediately notified the council of the development. Former head of state, General Jacob Gawan, has dismissed the allegations of money laundering leveled against him by a member of the United Kingdom Parliament. The elder statesman condemned the claims in an interview with Channel Television on Tulsi, three days after the UK lawmaker Tom accused him of looting half of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He stated that it was disappointing that a British parliamentarian could make such a statement without checking the facts. It is certainly surprising and disappointing that a British parliamentarian could make such a statement without checking the fact of what he was saying. He insisted that there was no time when he was held or questioned for money laundering, stressing that the allegation that he looted the nation's treasury was false. President Muhammadu Buhari had on Thursday in Abuja assured of more inclusion of women in governance to ensure even spread of development across the country. He also reaffirmed the commitment of his administration to end child marriage and boost girl-child education. The president, who received a group of Nigerian women led by Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallinn, at the State House said women have a pivotal role to play in Nigerians' development and their participation in politics and governance, 
must be improved starting with the 35% benchmark for women's participation as recommended in the national gender policy. For more on the story, Samira Ibrahim report. President Mahmoud Buhari said he truly understands that when equity becomes the guiding principle and women hold strategic leadership positions both in government and the private sector, not only will our development be accelerated but also the diversity and richness in the quality of our policy design, engagement and execution will be improved. The President assured that his administration remains resolute to not only meet the 35% national gender policy but to exceed it across key decision-making rules in the government. To further improve women's participation in politics and decision making, the president said it will be important that the ongoing constitutional review processes at all levels institutionalize accountability mechanisms and frameworks in the implementation of the national gender policy and the use of gender disaggregated data for planning. He recognized the value Nigerian women brought to the society, especially when they are supported and given a voice. Samira Ibrahim reporting for SVTV News. The former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yaqub, has appealed to the National Assembly to pass the Electoral Act Amendment Bill latest by the first quarter of 2021. He made the appeal on Thursday when he appeared before the Senate Committee on INIC at the National Assembly Complex in Abuja. Professor Yaqub Mahmoud appeared for his screening by the lawmakers following his reappointment as INEC chairman by President Muhammad Buhari. For more on the story of now to our correspondent, Hawa Muhammad. He informed the senators that passing the piece of legislation within the time frame recommended was critical for the success of the 2023 general election. The former INEC chief noted that the nation's electoral body had submitted several areas for amendments in the Electoral Act. He stressed that it was extremely important for the electoral legal framework to be finalized in due time, saying INEC cannot conduct elections under uncertainty. Professor Yakubu, however, said INEC would continue to deepen the use of technology for elections and explore other ways in which the electoral process could benefit from technology. He assured the lawmakers that the electoral umpire was working to ensure that materials needed for the elections were procured well ahead of time. The immediate past INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, asked questions for some senators during his screening for his reappointment on November 26, 2020. Hawa Muhammad reporting for SVTV News. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, stated on Thursday that it had reported a former chairman of the defunct pension reform tax team, Abdurashid Maina, who was jumped bail in his two billion naira money laundering trial to the government of Niger Republic and the United States of America. The anti-graft agency stated this in a counter affidavit. It filed at the Federal High Court in Abuja to oppose the bill application filed by the Borno South Senator Ali Indume, who has been detained in prison since Monday over his rateship for minor. For more on the story, Peter Phillips report. The EFCC stated that it was making frantic efforts to get Maina arrested based on the warrant issued by the court on November 18 and had enlisted the support of other security agencies and foreign governments to that effect. That to the misleading deposition in paragraph 4 of the supporting affidavit, the agency is of the fact that the prosecution has obtained the bench warrant and is making frantic efforts to execute it while enlisting the support of other security agencies in the country as well as some foreign government particularly the Republic of Niger and the United States of America. Justice Okong Abang fixed Friday for ruling on Ndume's bail application. The judge adjourned for ruling after Ndume's lawyer, Marcel Oru, argued the bail application, which was opposed by the EFCC lawyer, Muhammad Abubakar. On November 18, 2020, Justice Abang ruled that Maina had joined bail, having been absent from trial on four previous occasions since September 29, 2020. I am Peter Phillips reporting for SVTV News Guso. Still to come your way is the business, sport and the international news. But before that, a quick commercial break. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Let me quickly take you to our business desk for the business update. Welcome to Standard Voice Business Tax. The federal government is seeking more crude oil production quota from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. President Mohamed Buhari said Nigeria's huge population and fiscal development deficit should be considered by the oil cartel when sharing production cuts. The president made the appeal on Thursday at the State House Abuja while hosting the Secretary General of the African Petroleum Producers Organization, APO, Dr. Omar Farouk. In a statement issued by the Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity, Malen Garbashihu, the President observed that Nigeria needs all the resources she can gather from all sources, considering the weight of the responsibility of the nation, with 200 million people with severe deficit in infrastructure. President Mohamed Buhari welcomed Apus to cite the headquarters of the Africa Energy Investment Corporation in Abuja, pledging Nigeria's full support in ensuring the successful take-up of the organization. The president also assured that Nigeria will pay her share of the subscription accordingly. And that's all on business. Back to the newsroom. And on sport, over now to Sumaya Ibrahim. Hello, I'm Sumaya Dose and welcome to Sport Decks. Wrestler Super Eagles captain and coach Sunday Oluse said he has nothing but fond memories as the football world continued to mourn the dismiss of legendary Diego Maradona. The footballer repeatedly suffered cardiac attack and died at the age of 60 on Wednesday, but Oluse, who held the midfield for Nigeria in the historic group Dusa 94 World Cup tie against Argentina, said Maradona was undoubtedly one of the best players ever seen on planet football. The former Juventus playmaker said, going to the U.S. 94 World Cup, the impression they had was that they were to play against the best players, though he did not really know the level of competition. Olusei confessed the Super Eagles resorted to some aggression in order to Qatar Maradona, who was leading the Argentina Orchestra. In the encounter, they ended 2-1 in favor of the South Americans. And that's all on spot. Back to the newsroom. And on the international scene, President Mohamed Buhari has assured that Nigeria will encourage and support every move that will enhance economic cooperation between her and the Republic of Algeria. Receiving a special envoy of the Algerian president, who is also the country's foreign minister, Mr. Sabri Bukadum, at the State House Apucha on Thursday. The president said projects like the Trans-Sahara Road, international gas pipelines, and other areas of economic cooperation would be given adequate attention for the good of the people of the two countries. President Mohamed Buhari stressed the need for peace, tranquility, and security in African countries, saying that unless you secure your environment, you cannot manage it well. He called on the envoy to ensure good security in their countries in their country so as to bequeath good legacies to the next generation. The special envoy said Nigeria was the pillar of Africa and he had brought messages from his president so that we can consult and see what we can do together. That has been the news from Standard Voice Television. To end the news, a quick look at the major headlines. INEX security and politicians sign agreement for Zamfara peaceful by election conduct. As to divided over federal government offer to end strike, Professor Mahmoud Yaqub asks NAS to pass amended electoral act before 2021 first quarter ends. On business, Nigeria seeks better deal on OPEC quota. On sports, Olise recalls USA's 94 encounter with Maradona. And on the international scene, President Buhari assures deepened economic cooperation with Algeria. That's the news on behalf of the production crew and head of news in current affairs department, Alhaji Ibrahim Garabatino. 
I still remain Musajoy Unioza. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.